Summer solstice, the longest day of the year, and this was to be my longest ride. The South Downs Way, start to finish, 100 miles in one day, Winchester to Eastbourne. in the morning sunrise is amazing I can see a group of about four or five riders ahead of me must be doing the same as me I reckon I can see the Isle of Wight that's where Blake lives hey Blake ah, he's not there because he's gone on holiday to Scotland and this was his idea someone riding sun up to sun down and I'm doing it but so far so good it is 6 a.m. all right so 16 miles in just been gently sort of rolling hillside that was my first punchy hill down to my lowest gear. I've got a two by on. I was down in Granny Ring, I'm trying to keep my power as low as I can. I've got a power meter, I've got a heart rate monitor. Just trying to keep it nice and low, keep it sustainable. I've only done 500 meters climbing so far. I think it's 3,000 for the 100, 100 miles. So, plenty left to do. Seven o'clock in the morning, been riding for two hours and 15. It's nice to hit a little bit of tarmac, a bit of respite, a bit of smoothness. Uh, I've just seen the Isle of Wight again. It's getting closer. That's sort of giving me a bit of a sense of scale for this ride. Got to go past Brighton to get to Eastbourne and that feels like it's a long way away from the Isle of Wight. So, I don't know, 20 miles in. Yeah, it's a fifth of it but the legs are actually starting to feel it a little bit, that's surprising as well, but as they say, head down, bum up, hopefully it'll come. Oh yeah, and it's seven o'clock in the morning, and I've just eaten a sausage roll. Not proud of myself. But my computer says I've burned a thousand calories already. It's got to be a record for seven o'clock in the morning for me. Thirty miles in now, so about a third of the way, and the scenery's just opened up. It looks amazing. Uh, some of the UK viewers will probably know of Mint Sauce, the cartoon that was in Ember UK. Probably still is actually. This looks exactly like mint sauce. It's like I've just ridden into a cartoon. If you look closely over my shoulder, you might see a rambler sat down. That is a relatively elderly gentleman, probably in his 70s. He was just walking along, naked from the waist down tried to put some shorts on and fell over and he sat there and put his rucksack over his lap and I rode past him. That's weird. So it's half 11 now, 47 miles in, stopped for breakfast I guess you'd call it. Uh, so scrambled egg on toast, coffee and a coke and time to knock off the last 
53 miles to Eastbourne. Straight after lunch and then to the toughest climb yet. I think the hills are changing now, so there's lots of little ups and downs before lunch. But I have done half the climbing already, but now it goes into just bigger, longer, drawn out hills. So you can see them coming. Actually, legs feel all right. Sometimes you get back on the bike after a sit down, they feel terrible, but they feel all right. It doesn't feel too bad physically, but it just feels like I've seen loads. So it feels like I've seen loads of tracks, loads of gates. Still 50 miles to go. So this is gonna be the biggest off-road ride I've ever done today. I got into doing quite a few big road rides last year and got fairly fit. So regularly doing over 100, sort of 150 mile rides. Uh, and actually this is the biggest ride I've done since I had my accident last year. So I'm getting the fitness back. It's a few little niggling injuries still. I've actually got screws on the inside of my ankle, which kind of rub on any pair of shoes I seem to try and wear. So that's a bit tender, but it's not too bad and hopefully fitness is starting to return a bit. I could never have pictured myself 15 years ago doing a ride like this. I think the older I've got, the more I've sort of mixed up the type of riding I do. I still sort of feel like I'm that downhill racer, but I really like a bit of variety now. I mean, I've been riding for a long time, so I guess you do get bored of doing the same thing all the time. So it's quite nice just get on a cross country bike, go and ride some mellow trails and just challenge yourself in a different way. I've actually started to really like doing stuff like that. Don't get me wrong, I still love jumping on an enduro bike and shredding it, but this is also fun. But they call it type two fun, where it's sort of satisfying and fun after you've done it. Things a bit like that. I've got a good reference for those British viewers. Feels like I'm riding through the set of the Darling Buds of May. This sort of amazing countryside, some really posh houses. I've seen Spitfires, seen lots of very British things. That's a really nice part of the world. I've seen cows, sheep, I've seen a deer, I've seen ducks, geese, I've seen some chicks of some sort of grouse or something, I don't know. Kind of don't know my wildlife that well, but it's pretty cool. Bikes are always a really good way of sort of sneaking up on wildlife and getting to see them up close. I wonder what else I'll see. Spitfire's following me. I think there must be actually quite a lot of World War II history around here. I know there's a Churchill tank in one of these fields. I saw it on, on the websites that I found loads of information about his ride on. Also, I guess D-Day must have been launched from some of these beaches on the south coast. So, I don't know. Let me know if you know. I'm 60 miles in now. And the way my brain works, I try and work out as a fraction of how much I've done. So what's that, six tenths? and that is three fifths. That seems to take me way longer to work out because my brain is getting more stupid the further I ride. So three fifths, that's almost like Wednesday, isn't it? We're talking weeks, so that's hump day. So once you're over hump day, there's only two days of the week left, Thursday, Friday. Two fifths left, seems easy. Anyway, let me know if I'm babbling on. I think the further I ride, the less sense I make and the less chance of this selfie cam it's going to get into the final edit. I've seen a couple of amazing looking motocross tracks on the way. See that one right over there in the valley? It looks like a cool place going to spin some laps. It's crazy dirt around here. I've never ridden anything like it. It's all white. The trails are, I guess it's a mixture of like chalk and flint, but it's super picturesque. And I can see over there, it's winding back up, pretty big hill.
It's what I'm doing, the ride, self-supported. So carrying loads of food in this bag here. I've got a salad bag, stuff in my pockets. My computer says that I've uh, burnt 3,600 calories in 60 miles. So that's loads, got to eat loads. But also carrying two water bottles on my bike. So one thing's really got a plan is where you're stopping for water. And there are loads of these public places to fill up en route. Just important thing is trying to remember where they are. So what I've done is I've put a, a printout on my top tube. So with the mileage, the name of the place and where I can fill up. 78 miles in, feels like I've broken the back a bit now and just amazing cornfield. That looks like Eastbourne and one more hill. I hope I could have a nasty surprise. It's now almost 7 p.m. I've got less than five miles to go and the sun is starting to go down a bit. Well, not down. Still up for a few more hours so I could ride for longer if I wanted to, but I don't. And there is one more hill, of course. Eastbourne and loads of other mountain bikers finishing off at the same time. Done, 100 miles, 14 hours, 40 minutes. I think it was about 11 hours of ride time, but it was a big day out, it was really cool. Really enjoyed it. If you want to see another big day out where I rode the Italian Alps with Sotsin, click over there for that one. Give us a thumbs up if you like watching me suffer. Give us a like, mate. <laughs>